Hello and welcome to my channel. I am Stephanie. This is the week 38, week 38 weekly wrap up for September the 15th through the 21st. <music> I said this is the week 38 September the 15th through the 21st reading wrap up for me um yeah I read 12 books this week so this is gonna be another long one and what I have come to find out is that you guys actually like my long videos so on my weekend wrap ups I'm just gonna like go for it and I'm just gonna talk um, there's always the option when you're watching one of my videos to check the description box down below if you want to time jump if there's a book that you're specifically looking for make sure you check that description box so that you can you know jump to it if you're watching on your cell phone it's a little bit harder but the numbers are still there so that you can time jump to whatever book you're looking for i would appreciate it if you came back and watched the whole entire video but of course if you're pressed on time and you just want to look at this one book please do uh you know any view time is greatly appreciated uh so this week also I did some Instagramming, some stories and stuff like that because Namathon was going on. As I go through this week's wrap up, I will let you know where it fell in the readathon, but also I will do a sort of full compilation of the breakdown for Namathon in the middle before I do currently reads and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, 12 books, gonna be long. Because I started off the week really good and then whew, I might spill some tea and ended on a good note. So let's just get to it. Oh, before we get into it, let me address something that was commented to me. Um, the reason I do my videos in chronological order is because it's a little easier than doing it fits with my journal. If you haven't watched any of my videos where I talk about my book journal, I write down every single book that I read as I read it. So to go back and reshuffle all those to go from like worst book to best book, nah, nah, not going to happen. Too much work. I already do a whole bunch of work already. So that's why I don't do it that way. Okay. Little, little tea spilt right there. Um, let's get into what I read last week last week i started the week reading i want to text you up textual number two by tegan hunter i place this in new adult i give it four stars i give it three steam fans i listen to it on audiobook and even though a polycon 20 and 20 challenge is over this author will be at a polycon in 2020 so i want to read this entire series at some point before i meet her and this one did not fail me at all. So in this story, we have Zoe and Caleb. Caleb is the ex-boyfriend to the character, female character we met in book number one. Zoe is the best friend of that same character. And since Zoe now has a room open, Caleb needs somewhere to stay. She puts out an ad for a roommate, once again, doing things anonymously and crazily, getting crazy people. But... Does they really get crazy people? No, because Caleb is pretty awesome and they have this connection already. There's a secret crush that goes on and I was here for it. I really, really enjoyed it. It's it's nerdy and it's quirky and yes, so many yeses. The next book that I finished was The Hooker and the Hermit by L.H. Cosway and Penny Reed. Woo! Place this in rom-com. I give this book 4.5 stars. I give it five steam fans. Oh my goodness. What? Ah! So I read this for name for the letter H as a rom-com. And this book follows Annie, who is a secret blogger. And she does celebrity sightings and stuff like that in New York. And Ronan, who is a Irish rugby player who is in New York sort of trying to meet with some PR companies to revamp his image because he punched out a fellow player over in Ireland. Very, very bad. Bad Ronan, bad Ronan. But the two of them have a 
meeting without meeting and she Annie is a hermit so she likes to stay in her own sort of world she is a PR genius and she doesn't really she likes to work at home or she gets to work at home a lot because she has that celebrity anonymous blog as well and she kind of rips into him initially and it's super funny it is so quirky and it was just the amount of steam that I needed right now I haven't had a five star or five steam fan read in a long time and this was smoking smoking so hot so hot but I loved this book and I can't wait to get to the rest of the series because the characters the secondary characters if I'm not mistaken get their own books because there are four books in the series and some of those characters were really really interesting and I can't wait to get to them the next book that I finished was the unexpected plan by Letty Harper I place this in contemporary I give it 4.5 stars I give it four steam fans I read this as an arc I do believe it either comes out next week or it came out this week that just passed so go check that out and I'm gonna tell you why right now because Brooke gets wronged by an ex and she has a best friend that has a brother named Corbin who works with that douchebag and this is a revenge sort of thing so Brooke and her best friend get Corbin to sort of make this revenge plan with them to make her ex feel like she felt when she walked in on him cheating on her and I was here for it well as many revenge stories go especially when it happens to be with your best friend's brother um things don't always go as planned and I was here for the story I, it was just what I needed right when I needed it and I really really enjoyed it both characters are super relatable there are some definite pop culture references that were dropped in at the most perfect points and I wasn't overloaded with them and I was just here for this story it's a friends to lover story so if you like that sort of thing yes so many yeses the next book that I finished was the body painter master of trickery number one by pepper winters I placed this in romantic suspense I had a little bit of a time trying to figure out where I was going to place this in which sub subgenre and everything like that because once I start reviewing this, you will understand why. I gave this book 4.5 stars, and I give it three Steam fans. I read it as an ARC, and it released last week as well. Whew, I read this for name for the letter S, for red on the cover. Yes, it's very, like, subtly red, but there is red. So, this book follows Olin and Gil. Olin and Gil knew each other when they were kids. Both of them had very, very hard childhoods, and... The way Pepper Winters writes her books, it's very descriptive, and this story, Gil is a body painter, so he does body art, and he uses paintbrushes, and he uses airbrushes, and he's a graffiti artist, and they have a connection somehow. So there's a whole bunch of flashbacks and, you know, you get to know these two characters, you feel for the two characters. I was quite annoyed and frustrated with most of the most of the for both of the characters most of the book but that's something that pepper winters does she has this way of making you annoyed with the characters but at the same time falling in love with the characters and needing to want more and definitely that ending because this is a book one of a duet oh, i need some answers i need the second book like now there is a mystery that's going on there's instability with their romance that's supposed to be happening and whoo it is a little dark it does have some taboo things in it there's a murder that goes on um and it's somewhat described graphically so tread lightly if this is not sort of your field or subgenre that you usually go into this is why I had such a hard time figuring out which subgenre I was going to put it in I wasn't sure if I was going to put it in dark romance or if I was going to put it in romantic suspense um Ultimately, because of all the mystery that goes behind it, I did put it in romantic suspense because the two of them have this connection and taboo. You know, there's just a lot that goes into it. So if you have not read anything from Pepper Winters, I would suggest that you go back, read something from her, some of her dark line 
some of her taboo stuff before you jump into this one because this one is not a good starting point to get a feel for this writer's you know writing to understand why she does what she does but in the end I was like here for it even through all the frustration and annoyance the next book that I finished was Imperfect Match by Corinne Michaels and Melanie Harlow. I place this in contemporary. I give it 4.5 stars. I give it four Steam fans. I listened to it as an audiobook. Initially, I listened to this book for a letter of name -a but as I got into the story, it didn't actually fit that category, so I scratched it, but I'm still really happy that I read this book finally. I don't know why I have been sitting on it because I love both of these authors. These authors are amazing, and obviously when they come together, they're freaking amazing. So this story follows Willow, who is in a family of matchmakers. She's trying to prove herself with her family and show them that, hey, I can match, even though all the people that I've tried to match kind of suck and they break up. But you know what? I got the chops. I'm going to take over the business from you know my parents let them retire uh with my sister my sister's a hippie crazy person but i can't seem to make any matches well i have a best friend that lives across the hall from me who is happens to be nice and swoony his name is reed and they're best friends they hang out all the time and you would think of course they should be you know hooking up right no they're not hooking up they're just best friends the banter between them is absolutely hilarious it's such a fun matchmaking story i just just here for it and i loved it so very much the next book that i finished was the coaching hour how to date a douchebag number four by sarah nye i place this in a new adult i give it 4.25 stars i give it three steam fans i listen to it as an audiobook and i read it for Namathon for the letter P for sports romance. And this book follows Annabelle, who is the wrestling coach's daughter from the other three books. Yeah, three books in the series. So you have a little bit of knowledge about who coach is and stuff like that. Well, Annabelle transfers into his school and the school that he's coaching at. He's already put out that nobody is supposed to touch her. She's my daughter. Stay away from her. Things like that. Well, two of the douchebags on the wrestling team decide to make a bet and it's overheard people on campus knew about it annabelle ends up finding out about it and in walks elliot kind of saves her from a drunken night at a party and i actually like the fact that sarah has moved away from making any of her characters um douchebags because neither one of these two characters were douchebags they were actually really awesome and they were nerdy and they were quirky and they you just knew right from their first like meeting type thing even though she was drunk um you could see that he was like super sweet and that they would work out and they both did did, did. yeah there are some other things that happen within this story that i am sure uh fellow booktubers are not gonna like but oh well i enjoyed it Alrighty, the next book that i finished was royal holiday the wedding date number four by jasmine gullery i placed this in women's fiction don't come at me until you hear my review on this because i might spill a little tea i give this book 3.25 stars i give it one steam fan i read it as an arc this book actually comes out in october or november I read it for Namathon for the letter N for a mature character. This is a black author and this book follows Vivian who was the mother of one of the characters we already met. I believe it was in the wedding party. She ends up getting a job to dress the Duchess of England and for the holidays for Christmas she invites her mom to go with her while she's doing the dressing of the duchess now anna walks my sort of main issue with this is that if this had just remained a holiday fling for vivian the mother our mature character who's only like 54 years old 
um, I would have been here for this story. I was like, okay, I'm feeling it. She, what happens is that she goes downstairs in the castle and she ends up meeting this man, Malcolm, who happens to be the secretary to the queen and just happens to be on the grounds getting some scones. And then they end up taking a sweet little walk around the the estates and get to see some history and get to know each other and I was like oh so swoony so swoony I'm feeling this I like their chemistry I like their interaction things like that I like the sort of walk through England feel right and then and then and then we start talking about oh we're gonna have sex we need condoms we're going to have a relationship that's like super long distance. England, California. We really, R really. And the ending. Yeah, uh, if you don't want to know the ending, uh, you might want to like pause off of this. But surprise me. Those are the last two words. What the actual fuck? Seriously. How you gonna end a book with surprise me? I, uh, so mad. So mad, so mad, so mad. Now, I'm not trying to be like rude or mean or whatever, but this book was hot garbage. I mean, I was like, uh, how are you gonna give me this sweet, swoony, fun, mature character story for 80% and then try and throw in some young stuff. Come on. Come on. I don't know. No, I don't know any 50 year old that's talking about let's get some condoms. Make sure you got some condoms. Girl, you've been through menopause already. You ain't trying to have no kids. And yes, I know condoms are not just to protect against pregnancy, it, you know, STDs and stuff like that. But 50 folk. 54 years old go get yours girl and I don't need it in my books. I don't need it in my books Really, it was awkward. It was an awkward 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 sex scene wasn't sexy at all at all. The next book that I finished was definitely kinky by Annabelle Joseph I placed this in erotic BDSM short stories. I give it 3.5 stars. I give it four steam fans. I listen to it on the podcast of Read Me Romance. Read, read me romance. And unfortunately, this week, I must say, I enjoyed the conversation of Alexa Riley and Tessa Bailey a little bit more than I did the story. And this is because we follow Ruby, who is a part of a quartet, a string quartet, and Ethan, Stephen, Jonathan are her fellow bandmates. They are at a wedding. This is our opening. They're at a wedding, and then all of a sudden, all sorts of kinky shit starts happening. I was like, oh, what? What? Oh, I'm gonna get me a hot one, right? I'm gonna get me a hot... And then, and then, and then, Ruby... And Ethan walk off to their rooms. They end up sort of exploring the aspect of kink and what Ruby might like. I was here for that. I was like, okay, okay, yep. Then episode number one ends. And I was like, excuse me, can, what is going on here? Then I tuned in for Friday. And... Conversations great. Loved it. Tessa and Alexa Riley made me freaking cry. I think they had all of us crying this week uh, with their with the conversation that was going on. And then we heard the story and it it Lady Blue Balls mad about it. Such a tease, which is why it got such a low rating. I'm not here for my short stories to give me Lady Blue Balls. I'm going to need some closure. Closure. Good, good, good start. But Lady Blue Balls. That's all. 
the next book that I finished was Blitzed, which is playbook number three by Alexa Martin. I placed this in interracial contemporary. This is a sports romance. I give this book five humongous stars. I give it three Steam fans. I read it as an arc. I also read it as the letter T for game a for the hero on the cover, and this is a Black author. Oh my goodness, you guys, if you have not started the Playbook series, you need to get on it. This book actually doesn't come out until December, I think I said it was. Yes, December the 3rd, you guys will be able to get your little hands on this book. You need to do that. Now, you don't need to read the other two books in the series to be caught up or to understand what's going on in this book, which was the most amazing thing I have found about Alexa Martin. Um, so before I get into praising Alexa Martin, let me tell you about this story. This story follows Maxwell and Bryn. Bryn is our, her bar owner. She runs a all-female empowerment girl power bar where the lady mustang wags um wives and girlfriends of sports stars i think that's how it's all put out there um they go and visit and things like that so in this in this book to close out the sort of series you find that you have a lot of the other characters from the other books coming into this one so you definitely can't or you shouldn't read this book first in the series because you're going to be spoiled for some of the things that happen uh in the other books but definitely you could read this as a standalone you don't necessarily need to read the other ones like i was saying this book the two of them meet he's the football player maxwell is um he is into stem and disney and i was here for it here for it so here for it and this is another author that does or that did pop culture drop into their story in like the most perfect way perfect way so after i finished this book after I was completely amazed by it and I went on Twitter and I went on Instagram and I praised Alexa Martin, I found out as I was looking through setting up all those posts and stuff like that, that last September I read Intercepted. So I have been on this Alexa Martin journey for a year, one whole entire year, and I am so happy that I was honored to uh, arc read for this series and she has not failed me each one of the stories is unique and special and gives a different side of football and being a wife or spouse or you know girlfriend of someone that is in the football league and I was so here for it I was like oh I want these girls these ladies these women to be my friends they're body positive they are girl power they're just so many and this book in particular blitzed I would not have known or remembered that it was an interracial relationship if I had not looked at the cover the cover is the only thing that's like Yep, this is an interracial couple. I had not even remembered. It, it's not even like a big thing that Bryn is a white girl. And I was just like, I love that aspect. I love that aspect when an author could do an interracial romance that, yes, it's, you know that it's an interracial romance, but at the same time, these people are very, the characters are very personable and you don't necessarily have to focus on them. It's not all about oh, this person has blue eyes, this person has green eyes, this has fair skin and snow white skin and, you know, dark chocolate and caramel and all those descriptors or anything like that. She does an amazing job and, oh, yes, so many yeses, so many yeses. I cannot wait to read more by Alexa Martin and I just wish her all the best. Her Instagram, if you haven't been following it, you need to get on it because, whew, it's amazing too. Her Twitter, she's very sweet and I just, yes. All things Alexa Martin in this, in this, yes. Yes, so much. 
The next book that I finished was Finding Home Again, Loving Catalina Cove, number three by Brenda Jackson. I placed this in contemporary. I give it 3.5 stars. I give it two Steam fans. I, I read it as an arc and I read it for Namathon, the letter E. Now I have two E's in my name, so I read it for Enemies to Lovers and it fit for green on the cover. Yay. So both my E's were covered by the same book. This book follows Bryce and Keegan. Now, if you've read the other two books in this series, you know Bryce and Keegan have a love to hate relationship like Sirius. They were childhood lovers or, you know, had a romance when they were kids. And then something happens. You don't know what happens. Your sets thinking about what happened pretty much all the way through. And in Catalina Cove style there's a whole bunch of drama that goes along with it and I wasn't necessarily feeling this book. For one the formatting of the arc really really got to me. It was very messy. Very very messy and I really hope and I'm pretty sure that they will fix all of that once the book actually comes out but whew, that formatting was not 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 good. And I actually think they'll probably change up some things uh, in the story because further down the road, you could see that it sort of reverted back. It did some flashbacks, some reiteration of some information that you had already known. It was like, but I already know that. What is going on? How? I don't understand. Um, I forgot to mention this is a black author as well. Um, I did enjoy the story. I enjoyed the series. So there's a good chance that I will go back and reread all of the books after they have all come out just to make sure that I really, really enjoyed uh, all the stories and things like that, things like that. And like I said, it wasn't bad, but there were some things that just didn't sit right with me. Then there was this sort of like mystery or like a crazy stalker that was thrown in and I was like as soon as he sort of showed up on page I was like this is not good this is not gonna be good for for them something's gonna happen with this crazy crazy guy too much and it just didn't really make sense for me to have the crazy stalker there could have been other issues that made that twist thing go but yeah I was just like I wanted to love it more but I just couldn't the next book that I finished was Five Feet Apart by Rachel Lippincott. Lippincott? Colt? Lippincott. I place this in Young Adult and I give it 3.5 stars. I give it zero Steam fans because it's not going to be a Steam fans kind of story. I read, listened to this as an audiobook and I read it for Namathon for the letter A for film adaptation and. I've actually already watched this movie. I had watched this movie and then found out it was a book and was like, oh, I can use it for a readathon that has film adaptations that, you know, you have to read and stuff like that. So, ooh, that's what I did. Um, I wasn't a fan of the movie and I really wasn't a fan of the book. So Stella and Will both have cystic fibrosis and they are in the hospital. This is about their stay, their current stay in the hospital and the things that they have to go through. I wasn't a fan of the ending. Um, when I say that it's a young adult book, I don't think it's young adult romance because I was not happy with that ending at all whatsoever. Um, and I just didn't, I didn't feel the connection between the characters either. So I was just like, uh, wow. Yeah. And to finish off the week, I read Ruick. I listened to this like four or five times, and I can't believe that I can't say his name. But this is Brothers of Ash and Fire, number three, by Lauren Smith. This is a paranormal romance. I give this book four stars. I give it three Steam fans. I listen to it as an audiobook, and I read it for Namathon for the letter I for international because it is set in Russia. 
This is our third dragon brother. He is the warrior dragon of the uh, family. And if you've read the other two books or heard my reviews for the other two books, you know that I really enjoy this one or enjoy the series. I'm super happy to uh, read this series. So Ruick is the warrior and Charlotte is the sister of, of uh, paranormal hunters. They are part of a league. I think it's league or council or something like that. But it's this big secret sort of agency that kind of wants to make sure the dragons stay in line, make sure the vampires stay in line, all that other good stuff. And when Charlotte wants to sort of prove herself, she's a biochemist as well. She finds out that... Uh, there's this chemical that can take a dragon's sort of rage and dragonness, their dragon essence away for a small period of time. She decides that she is going to go over and try and get some information from Ruick that her brothers have not been able to because they're male and they're broody and they do things, you know, knocking down doors and stuff like that. She thought she would take a different approach to it. I was here for this story. I really enjoyed it. The narrator was on point once again. Her accents are amazing. Uh, granted, I don't, you know, I don't know if they're authentic or anything like that, but I, they were nice to my ears. I really enjoyed it. I enjoyed the story. I enjoyed this series. I kind of wish there were more books to come because I kind of want more of these dragons. Um... This definitely sent me on a dragon kick, and I'm here for it. So let's do a quick wrap-up of all of the things that I read for Namathon so that you guys can see by name spelled out. And Namathon was a readathon that was held by Under the Cover Book Blog, and ideally reviewed. It was fun. You took your name or a version of your name and you read books that they have for categories and stuff like that. So for the letter S, I read a rom-com and that was The Body Painter by Pepper Winters. For T, I read A Hero on the Cover and that was Blitzed by Alexa Martin. For E, Enemies to Lovers, Finding Home Again by Brenda Jackson. For P, I read Sports Romance. And that was The Coaching Hour by Sarah Nye. For H, I read a rom-com, and that was The Hooker and the Hermit by L.H. Causeway and Penny Reed. For A, I read a film adaptation, and that was Five Feet Apart by Rachel Lippincott. For N, I read a mature main character, and that was Royal Holiday by Jasmine Gullery. For I, I read International, and that was Ruick by Lauren Smith. For E, once again, I read Green on the cover for Finding Home Again by Brenda Jackson. On to what I am currently reading and what I'll be participating in next week, which is a lot. So I am currently reading Work For It by Talia Hibbert. I actually was reading this for name but it did not work out that I got to finish it. Um, actually, I haven't even started it really. But I'm moving it to the uh, next readathon, which is contemporary -thon, And I'm also reading Hollywood Dirt by Alessandra Tori. So contemporary -thon, if you did not know, it is round five for contemporary -thon, and my TBR has moved around just a little bit from the first Tuesday of the month where I gave you guys, you know, my TBR, and it's being hosted by Chelsea, Julie, Natasha, and Melanie. The categories are read a 2019 release and for that i'm going to try and either read she's got game by lauren heffernan or handle with care by marie hart for read a contemporary with yellow on the cover this is where i am moving work for it by talia hibbert or i will be reading the bromance book club by lissa k adams for read a diverse contemporary aim for something outside of my own experience i will be 
trying to read The Bitter Root by Devney Perry or Sweet Tea and Sympathy by Molly Harper. For read a contemporary with an illustrated cover, I will be trying to either read Not the Girl You Marry by Andy J. Christopher or Faker by Sarah Smith. For read a dark, hard-hitting contemporary, I will be trying to either read Dark Notes by Pam Godwin or Hell and Back by Natasha Matson. For read a contemporary that has a plant on the cover, I will be trying to either read Concerto by Sky Warren or How to Walk Away by Catherine Center. And for read a contemporary that is beloved by a fellow creator uh, or book community member, I will either be trying to read Man Candy by Melanie Harlow, which was suggested to me by Brie, who, by the way, is back and has a channel. Make sure you go check out her channel. Check out her blog, too, but check out her channel because she's amazing. Yes, she is. Or I will be reading Born Darkly by Trisha Wolf, which was suggested to me by Jess from Peace Love Books. She's awesome as well, and I will leave her link down in the description box. Okay, Whew. long video, which is fine. It only bothers me because I have to edit this stuff now. Um, but it's all good. It's all good. I do it for you. I do it for you guys. So have you read any of the books that I just named off? What were your thoughts on them? Are you going to read any of them? Did I make them sound interesting? As always, if you enjoyed this video, please give me a big thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. Also, there's a feedback form down in the description box so you guys can sh help me improve my channel. All my social information is down there as well. Make sure you're following me on all my platforms. And I will see you guys later.